the fun. So with that, everyone, thanks for coming to DBA Fundamentals presentation. This week on SQL Assessment, Microsoft Best Practices Checker with Taya Bali. It today is June 14th, 2022. In the top right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see the three leaders of the DBA Fundamentals Group, Steve Cantrell, Shane O'Neill, and myself, Kevin Wilkie. Beside our names there, you'll see our Twitter handles. If you need to get a hold of us for any reason, that's the easiest way to. Below that, you'll see the social media for all of DBA Fundamentals, the virtual the various ways we get a hold of, hold of us. Top one being Meetup. That's probably the easiest way y'all found us today and most times to actually see our upcoming events and whatnot. Uh, below that, you'll see us see our website, dbafund.org, where you'll see our upcoming presentations as well as all of our meeting archives. So you'll see all of our past presentations. Below that is what we call DBA FunTube, the most fun place you'll have on the internet for DBAs. You'll see all of our archives um, on YouTube, in our version of YouTube. Please make sure to like and subscribe any of our past presentations on there so you'll know when our upcoming presentations are actually placed out there for review. Below that, you'll find us our places on Twitter, on Slack, and on LinkedIn. Hopefully you'll have at least come see us on a few of those. If not, please join us sometime in the future. As always, today's session is being recorded and usually be available within one to two days. Um, like I said, it'll be on dbafuntube.com rather soon. Uh, also, please make sure to turn off your camera so that all of the broadcasting bandwidth actually comes from Tab so that you can see his lovely face and everything that you'll actually see there on the screen for demos. And also be sure to mute yourself because uh, we don't want people to be confused on what's going on or the presenter to be confused that you're asking questions. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please be sure to type your questions into our chat window where we'll be talking throughout the entire presentation on just that your questions. Uh, with that, we go to Tab's um, actual bio. And this is just a small glimpse of what he does. I know he does way more than this. So with that, I turn it over to Ali. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So I'm just going to take the share and share my screen. Hopefully you can see. So before I start, just a couple of housekeeping. As Kevin said, a pretty large group. So I would appreciate if you just put your questions in the chat. I am actually watching the chat uh, actively. And the reason I'm going to hold on to the questions because as this is a demo intensive session, as I said in my uh, abstract, I'll have a few awkward moments that I have to run some stuff and uh, I would uh, use those awkward moments to answer questions. Uh, I'm very much aware that this is a working hour meeting, means uh, people in, you know, from West to East Coast, this is a working hour. So I promise you the main presentation will finish at sharp at 1 p.m. Eastern time, but I will be available as long as anyone has questions. So I've cleared my calendar for, uh, you know, for a little bit more, so I will be able to answer your questions. Plus I'll share you my uh, contacts. Uh, you will be able to download this. Most of this stuff is actually taken from Microsoft's GitHub page with the product manager's permission, uh, and I modified those. So, and you can get it from the Microsoft place, or you can even, uh, you know, get it from my GitHub repo. Um, I do not have any slide, just so you know. Um, so, before I start, what you are looking at uh, at the screen? This is a tool by Microsoft called. <coughs> Azure Data Studio. It is free to download. You do not have to have a license. This is a very lightweight software. Uh, it's multi platform. Uh, you can run notebooks. If you do not know what's a notebook, I'm not going to go into details. So you can see I'm using one called PowerShell kernel. It has a bunch of other kernels as you see in this drop down. Uh, please look up. There are a bunch of you know um, beautiful presentation by many technologists and even from Microsoft employees. 
about a notebook. Uh, in one sentence, you can have your code, comments, picture, results set all in one. You can save it and ship it to someone else. So uh, I'm using it a lot nowadays for troubleshooting within the team. Um, and Microsoft, actually, the Tiger team uh, has, you know, people created notebooks with using Tiger Teams uh, troubleshooting uh, queries, and you can download those notebooks. I'll stop here. So the first one you're seeing, um, you know, I have a control notebook that has some metadata, and then we'll go into uh, all demos. Uh, I'm not going to read my abstract. Uh, now, why would you listen to this talk, right? This is a... Uh, yes, so Linda said, without slides being available, I do not have any slide. Will a copy of the notebook being used be? Yes, Linda, it will be available. I'll share the link uh, with you at the end, and you should be able to download all this uh, and, and use it, whatever you need, and you can give me feedback, or if you have questions, you can follow up with me. So why would you listen to this talk, right? If you're in East Coast, this is your lunch hour, West Coast, you just started working at 9 a.m. Why take your time off? You're all, you're all busy, right? Why would you listen to me? Uh, if you want to listen to me, if you have hundreds of SQL Server or you have you know one or many SQL Server, you have uh, one or many databases, and you want to make sure without really working hard to write all those you know hundreds of lines of PowerShell modules, um, either or C sharp or Python, um, that are you following Microsoft recommended best practice, right? If you want to do that, uh, being lazy like me, this is the talk for you. Uh, now I understand that Microsoft's recommended practice might not be optimal for you, right? You might have edge cases, your workload might be different, you might, those rules might not be applicable for you. And yes, what you can do is out of those, you know, 200 plus rules, you can turn those off for your environment and I'll show you how. You can customize those, you can change the thresholds, uh, you can bring third party rules, uh, but be careful, I put this in yellow, you know, make sure you test it, and you can write your own rules. So you can do all this. Um, and um, and if you want to do it, you know, get a ready-made solution by Microsoft engineers, then this is the talk for you. Now, wh uh, where can you use this? What I'm going to show you. Uh, I have listed this. I'm not going to read this. Uh, pretty much anywhere except PaaS SQL Server, uh, you know, like Azure SQL Database, you still cannot use it. Other than that, you know, again, managed instance is under um, uh, you know, Azure SQL database in the same umbrella, but you can do managed instance, SQL Server and Azure, Linux. And at the end, I'll also show you something because I'll sh most of this stuff uh, will be using PowerShell. If you say, I do not, I love PowerShell, but I don't want to write it. I don't want to use it for now. I don't have time. Uh, I'll also show you something that uh, uh, we have an extension and what's the extension. So as I said at the beginning, this tool, or the software is very lightweight. If you need more functionality to use with Azure Data Studio, or there's another tool called Visual Data, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, maybe I'm using wrong term, sorry. Uh, you can enable these uh, extensions and uh, you can disable this. So uh, you, you can do that. Uh, so I have enabled few and I'll show you one how to use with this. So John Mason said, maybe it's in the repo. This is the first time I've seen notebooks used outside of Python. OK, so John, uh, you can actually uh, use notebooks using Azure Data Studio, even with SQL, T-SQL, Kusto, Log Analytics. Uh, I know you mentioned Python, but uh, you can even have even PowerShell. So. Um, uh, once you download Azure Data Studio, you can use all kind of notebooks uh, using this. Uh, Mark Freeman said it's sad that Azure SQL Database is excluded. Yes, it's not yet, but I think, uh, Mark, it, it will probably get added soon. I'm I'm hopeful, uh, and um, you know I know you are sad, and I think you have a good reason to be sad. I'm not going to blame you for that. Uh, I put a warning here. Um, and this is actually copied from the documentation. And so Microsoft said, you know, this SQL assessment API is good. It will, you know, cover many areas, but does not go deeply into security. And Microsoft recommend you use SQL vulnerability ass assessment um, uh, to, to do that. And, you know, um, that's a totally different topic. I'm not going to go there, but uh, you definitely want to check out vulnerability assessment both on premises and in cloud. Uh, these are the things I'm going to demo. Hopefully, we have time. 
Um, there's no reason to read this. These are some of the references. If you want to go a little bit, you know, re, you know, read more because this is just an hour. We only have 50 minutes left. Uh, you can use this um, uh, this URLs. And if you want to get the notebooks from the source where I download it from, and then I, of course I modified, but if you want to get the original one by Microsoft engineers or the product managers, um, you can go to these URLs. And this is my contact. I'll share this at the end with you. I monitor all four. So Twitter, LinkedIn, my website, there's a contact page, and also you can directly email me. And I, I can guarantee you that uh, unless it makes to my spam for some reason that I, you know, I don't notice it. Uh, you will get answer from me for sure. Uh, that's a guarantee. It might take two, three days, but I'll definitely let you know, uh, or, or or I'll, you know, engage with you to to answer your questions. If you want to give me a feedback, uh, make sure it's constructive, right? Just telling me that I didn't do a good job or you didn't like it uh, really doesn't help, right? I cannot help. I cannot improve it unless you tell me why or what part you didn't like. So that's pretty much about it. So before we go into you know, show you how to use this. You, uh, you know, I thought uh, it would be nice to just make sense of what it is, right? What are we talking about? Because some of you are probably pretty new to this. So what I did, I loaded all this rule set. You know, they come in two different format. One is a CSV and a JSON. I loaded this into a SQL Server table uh, because uh, it's just easier for me to, um, you know, to query those. And see what what are these, right? So I used the SQL Server 2019 uh, instance. I did uh, install 2022. I haven't, you know, start moving everything. I I haven't uh, moved everything into 2022 into the CDP version. So this is SQL 2019 CU 16. It really doesn't matter. Uh, so as you can see, I'm connected to my local named instance SQL 2019 here. This is a SQL kernel. So this is a SQL notebook. So who asked this question here? Yeah, John, you said you haven't seen anything other than Python. So as you see that the first one you saw was a PowerShell kernel. This is a true SQL kernel and I can use it in some way, right? You know, quote unquote in some way um, as a, you know, what we do in management studio, not everything. And I don't want to get into that debate whether, you know, which one is good or bad or what it is. So just a select count. So we have 244 rules. And this is a, just a sample of the top five, right? Random. There is no uh, there is no order to it. So each rule has an ID, item type, enabled or disabled. Uh, they have a you know it's a medium information, and then you also have like you know, uh, and we look at you know what other levels we have. Uh, there's a display name, message tag. Tags are very important. We will use it uh, because you can run rules based on the tags, right? I can say. Uh, I want to evaluate this SQL Server or this database against all trace flags that uh, have this or all the performance related rules. I can do those uh, using this tag. So they are very useful. There is a, you know, so this is just a display name and a little bit of message, but on the description column, you have more info about it. And then there's a help link for each of the item. Then I have target type, right? Because I can run it against my server or an individual database or all databases. And then now, as you know, SQL Server runs in Linux and Windows, so does all the rules uh, are applicable for both operating system? No, some are for both, some are only for Windows, some are only for Linux. Uh, then there's target, like is it you know on-premises managed instance and all that? And there's also a target version. Uh, yeah, the target version is, you know, uh, so how back I can go, right? Uh, you know, can I run it from, and when you see 11, 12, these are major versions, right? Um, uh, just, you know, every SQL Server major versions also has a number associated with it. Uh, I'll make a mistake now if I try to, I think SQL 2019 is a 16.0, most likely, and, and don't quote me on that, you can look it up. Yeah, now John is seeing some good use of this, okay, which is great. Uh, so now let's look at some distinct target type, right? Distinct target type. So it's, you know, database and server. Some of this you'll see null. And the reason you see null is maybe a rule came out that you can run against 2012. And then over a period of time, uh, you know, like we are, you know, we are chatting before this and, you know, like Kevin was saying, uh, you know, some of the fundamentals for SQL Server 20, 2008 might not be applicable anymore for SQL Server 2022, right? Things change. Uh, we know like, you know, TempDB has major changes. Uh, and, you know, it now even use some in-memory, um, um, you know, uh, structures uh, that, you know, that re uh, reduce contention. So here also, if there is a default rule came out and then the subsequently they added some more, uh, you know, extra, 
guidance or an update uh, of that rule or exception for that rule for newer versions. So those are marked under null. And you know, once you if you can load these rules, and once you you know query, you'll see which ones are null and and why it makes sense. And as I was saying, there are different levels, as you can see: warning, medium, low. You know, and I just did a count just to show you. Target platform again: Windows, Linux. Some are null because they are overrides. Uh, some of these are additions. Where you can run this. Major versions, and some of these are my favorites. And you know, you, you know, you don't have to, you know, have the same favorites as mine, right? So, so this is just to give you a glimpse of what we are talking about, what these rules are, where they can be applicable. So now, I could have saved this with the result set and sent to someone, right? And they don't have to have access to my database to read all this. They could just open it. They can see the query. They can see the result set, right? without giving them read permission to my database or read privilege. So this is a another awesomeness of this. Uh, notebooks. OK, so we looked at that and SQL assessment favorite. So I'm going to show you. We'll, 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 we'll you know, dive deep, but before that I just want to show you a few. Examples quick ones and then we'll talk about very systematically how you can set this up in your environment. Uh, I'll talk about what PowerShell module you need and then you know what commands you need. You need the SQL Server module, but there's a minimum version that you need. And then I'm going to declare some variables so I don't have to type this again and again. And just. You know, out of the box, I'm just showing you there's two commands and I'll, I'll give you more details on those. So I'm calling this assessment against my SQL Server instance. So my scope is a server at this point. And uh, I will. Check deprecated features. Uh, and it lists all the deprecated features. One thing I am not going to do in this session, I'm not going to read the outputs. I'm not going to teach you how to solve this if you have a problem with your rules because we have 244 rules. This is going to take us probably a whole day to if we have to look at the outputs and talk. So I'm going to remove the outputs right away. The goal of this talk is not to tell you how to fix your TEMDB files, how to fill, uh, set your, uh, you know, fix your max DOP, uh, duplicate index, unused index. It will be here. All of this, some of these itself can be an hour or two hour talk. So. Please, that's not the goal. My goal is how you can check these things and so now how you solve it. Like I said, it's going to take us, you know, probably a day or two to talk about this. So I'm going to delete this. So this is just a quick example of how you can run this. Now, and I'm just showing you some of my favorites, right? Uh, all of you, uh, uh, all of you know that you know this is a good practice to have all of your TMDB files same size, right? Now, how many TMDB files you should have? Like again, I said that can be a whole hour of discussion. So just for a demo purpose, right? What I'm going to do in my local instance, I'm going to make one of the TMDB file different size, right? And this is I'm just doing for demo. Now, if I go here, I run this rule. There's a rule named TMDB files not same size, right? So if there's no way you can make mistakes is very obvious. So if I run this, it tells me that. I have files that are not same size. Now if I go and revert this, roll back, make it same size, come back, run this, I do not have any error. Right? Means all my TMDB files are same size. Uh, another example. I'm going to create a username with the same password is the same as the username. And again, I'm not, you know, this is just for demo. I'm sure uh, there is one for actually weak password. That'll be fun to run in your environment, especially in your non production environment. It tells me even that this login has an equal password. And just to, for completeness, if I drop this, I do not get it. Um, I have some demo code that I copied from this website, MS SQL Tips. Uh, 
my good friend Joe is uh, one of the. You know, he writes a lot in there, so. Uh, one thing I'll warn you. Uh, if you are going to delete some indexes that you think not being used, please do not just run this and go and start deleting the indexes. Uh, and there are some good guidance online. Make sure you read from a credible source that what are the things that you can do before you really decide to, uh, you know, disable or uh, probably disable is a good idea before you drop. But I'm just showing you duplicate indexes and you can find out index not being used. Uh, and there's another one with the max memory uh, power setting. Oftentimes you open a case with Microsoft and they come back and they say, you know, things are slow because your CPU is not running at the optimal speed because uh, your uh, power setting is not correct, right? And, you know, I know we need to be careful with our environment, you know, we need to be green, but, you know, if I'm paying $3,000 for a set of core for licensing, I'm not the one going to try to say power in my data center, right? So I'm really not uh, that dedicated. I'll be honest with you. So if you want to see your um, power config, it says that I'm not in a high performance power plan, right? Which is recommended for SQL servers, even by Microsoft. So now if I change this now and run this, now I don't get the alert. And here, you know, this is a small partial command. You can see what are the configs you have and I'm going to roll back. So now I'm talking about for about 20 minutes now, right? And you might be wondering, OK, you said, you know, if I have thousands of database, thousands of, you know, SQL servers, I can run this, but you are running it against a single server, single database, right? Yes, I'll show you at the end how you can take this codes and put it across your environment. So uh, you, you can check a settings for doesn't matter, 10,000 databases just by few lines of code without writing anything because these rules are given by Microsoft. You can do it against thousands of servers. So I'll show you at the end. So just bear with me. Um, Lee said, what permissions do I need? Should I run scripts under master database? So these are I'm not running against any databases. Uh, once I set the scope, whether it's a server, whether it's a database, it will automatically go and run against it. What permissions do I need? It's a good question. So I'm going to write this, Lee. If you send me an email um, or a tweet with your contact, I'll find that and I'll let you know. And I probably should add this um, in a comment section in one of the notebooks, right? What permissions I need? I really haven't thought about it because I was playing with it. I have this set up in my company one but we have a you know I'm not going to go into details how I do that there but in my laptop you know I'm the boss so I really did not think of uh, checking that but I will definitely do that and uh, um, I'll add it next time and if you want to uh, ping me uh, I'll definitely get back to you. John Mason said is there a good way to look up the ways to address a rule violation uh, yes, John, so just bear with me. I'll show you uh, because now I'm looking at the screen. So once I close it, it's gone. So my recommendation is to save this results in a SQL Server table and from there you can have some SSRS or Powered BI report. So you can see that your team, say like at the beginning, you had 1000 violation and then every week it's going down, right? That should be and at the end of the year, you know, when it comes to November. You know, send a Power BI graph to your boss right before he decides the raise for the next year. So yes, I'll show you that. How much resource will it use? Uh, Eric, if I have to take a guess, I cannot give you a number. Um, probably very less because these are mostly querying metadata. All right, so like you know, like like with NSP, who is active, we query from metadata, looking at what types and and all that. Um, they are pretty. We are not going into the plan cache and trying to mine them. Even you know, you go to plan cache uh, with Rina and committed. You know, it's not a, not a big problem. Uh, Sometimes, if you try to read every page in the plan cache, see which one is dirty and uh, and clean, yes, it can be intensive. If you have like a, you know, like I have servers with two terabyte of memory, but these I, I you know, I run it across. I'm not going to go with numbers. Uh, big big database state, and I haven't seen any issues. OK, so 
so far I'm just trying to give you a, some idea. Let's go to some, some you know, in a mathematical way how you can set this up in a large environment. So, so we have gone through these two. I'm not going to talk about this one uh, because this is an in-depth demo. We'll talk about this. If uh, any of you think you're too busy, you don't have time to look at this one, start with the quick start one. I've just put it there. Uh, if someone wants to just you know spend five, 10 minutes and get it started, go to the quick start, but we'll start with the in-depth one. And I'll probably spend most of the time here, probably at least you know next 20 minutes. So as I said at the beginning, I did not write this from scratch. This was copied from here. If you want to go and get the original one, you can get it from here. Uh, and I said, you know what I'm going to show you in this uh, run book, uh, uh, sorry, in this notebook. And uh, this is where you can uh, download the raw rules so in JSON format. There's also, I think, a, a CSV format there in the same um, GitHub repo. Uh, there's mainly two commands, and you already saw I used invoke SQL assessment. I haven't used get SQL assessment item. So get SQL assessment just give you the list of the rules that will get applied if you run this, uh, you know, depending on the scope. And uh, invoke is going to run the rules and give you the, uh, you know, do the evaluation. And you can combine these two. You can say I want to get the list and then pipe it to invoke SQL assessment. If you uh, have worked with PowerShell, I'm sure probably even in, at a beginner capacity, you know what's the pipeline. And you can see it in my example also. Uh, setup. So you definitely need SQL Server module. This is the minimum version. I have a higher version here. And uh, there is one more thing. I think it's coming up here. Yeah. Yeah, I might talk about this right now. So, uh, you know, please read this, you know, some of the stuff that I wrote here because I collected it from all of, you know, from different documents. Uh, just put the one that you really need to know. Um, so there are various ways to run. You know, I said that uh, you can run it against your registered servers if you are using a. Um, yeah, I'll get there. The current implementation actually need XP command shell for some of the commands, but at the same time, there is a rule by Microsoft that you should disable your XP command shell. So it's kind of contradictory, right? Microsoft is saying that, you know, don't keep your XP command shell turned on, but then you are asking me to run this rule set that I need XP command shell to be turned on. So it's I know it's contradictory, so I did send email to the product manager. So I'm like, okay, what's up with this? What can you do? So they are aware of it. They are really working on it. To change it that you do not need the XP command shell, uh, you know, um, and and you know it's going to use .NET APIs, and but they are not there yet. So for now, the guidance will be to turn it on, XP command shell, run your rules, and then have another command at the end to turn it off, right? For each server, that's the only way I can think of because there are some of the rules that will need that for now. Uh, OK, so let's import the modules. Yeah, as you can see, it needs this. I have a little bit of a higher version here, so I should be good. Uh, so the first one, without going into details, get SQL instance, passing the name, and then this is a pipe in PowerShell. I'm calling the Invoke SQL assessment, right? Now, this is going to run all the rules at a instance level. Ruben, you said, are you limited running one test at a time? I just said that before a few minutes, if you're paid attention, that I'll show you how you can run this with. Uh, I'm trying to build up. I don't want to go and show that at the beginning, how you can run this against thousand servers, but I'll show you. No, you do not have to. You're not limited to running one test at a time. Uh, you can run all tests against all databases in a server or against multiple databases, multiple servers and all databases. So I'll show you that. I'm just trying to build up to that level. Again, I'm not going to read the outputs. You can see, uh, you know, you have to find yourself. Now, this is option one. So what's all this? What's the other five options? Uh, you know, everybody code differently, right? Everybody has their own style. Um, so this, whatever the option one did, all this will do the same thing. I'm not going to run this. I just put it if someone is, uh, you know, writing code in a different way, uh, and you know they are going th through the, you know, through the SQL Server, you know, folder structure. 
uh, you can use all this. So, so they're all valid. It's the same thing. I'm not going to run this. Now, I say that uh, as your virtual machines, you can use this, and I tested this, um, but this is not the most secure way because it's my test environment. I use the public IP address actually at my work. Uh, we use private endpoints, so public IP is not even exposed, so you won't be able to run this at my work. Uh, but you have to, you know, find other, uh, you know, other way to to um, authenticate you to that, um, uh, you know, or whatever account you're running this under. But I just put this in as an example. Uh, if you want to run these rules again against against managed instance, uh, you know, this is a set of command you can use. But of course, what did I do now? Oh, sorry. Uh, but you definitely want to use a different um, you know, way to authenticate, not using the public IP address. Now I showed you how to run it against the server. How about database? So here I have a name, right? So I'm getting the database into a variable and I'm running it. So I'm running it against this one single database. If you don't want it, take this out. It will run against all the databases and I'll show you that probably in, in some futures down here. Again, this one has option two and three, meaning this command and this two option and three command are same thing. They're equivalent, so um, you can use anything you want. Um, so now the rules ran against all the rules that are applicable at a database scope for my 2019 version. I ran all the rules and you will see like a lengthy, uh, you know, and uh, there are some stuff I don't fix purposely because, uh, you know, some are actually built in into Microsoft, so you can blame Microsoft for that, but some I don't fix just for the demo purpose here. So. Um, plus, I, I rebuild this all the time for different reasons. Uh, now here, this is an example that I can run it against for, for all database, so it might take a little bit longer, but we can uh, get this going because I did not select a single database, so it's getting all the database piped to invoke SQL assessment, meaning go and check all my database using all the rules, right? And I'm sure this will be a very, very long list. I actually deleted some of the database before this today just to uh, so just this finishes you know uh, comparatively quicker uh, especially i have um, stack exchange database um, that takes really long because you know it's, it's pretty big there are different versions you can download so okay so we've seen database server so we haven't seen uh, get SQL assessment item, right? So I've been using invoke SQL assessment. So now this is the first time. I'm now, this is not assessing any rules. So that's the difference. I'm just trying to see for my scope, what are the rules are going to run? And it's just giving me a list of the rules. And I can also get the rules just for master database, right? So someone asked, Lee asked, you know, um, should I run a script under master database? And here you can see. Once I set my scope, I do not really have to see use master or anything. I can it will only run the rules that applicable to master database. Uh, I want to run the rules that with minimum severity warning. I do not care about information and or I can do that. I know I'm not combining get item and invoke, but I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I told you I can use the tag. So this is a tag for trace flag, meaning give me all the rules with the tag name trace flag. Uh, run a specific rule with ID. So if we go here, just for demo purpose, turn on XP command shell. We come here. I'm just running a single rule. And I can run this against thousands of servers. So now it says that, you know, it exposes to security risk, it's on. Let's go and turn this off. Run this rule again. This time it's not going to complain. I can check my backup. Uh, there is a, um, it broke with the last release. I, you know, I did tell them, so they're looking at it. Uh, 
here is the an example. I'm getting my SQL assessment item. And then I'm. Invoking SQL assessment item. And. If you do not know what's the outgrid view pass through, uh, please look it up. It's the neat thing in PowerShell. So I'll show you if I do this. Oh, it came to my other window. Now it shows me all the rules, right? I can go in and I'm just randomly choosing. I really did not prepare for which was I say like I just choose this one. Let's choose this view. OK, so now it is. That's interesting. Run this again. You're supposed to run those that I choose. Which is running. No, it is not. OK, this time it works. OK, so you go and select which one you want to run and you can do that. So someone asked. Yeah, John asked John Mason. Is there a good way to look up the ways to address a rule violation? Right? So this is uh, John answering your question. So far, what I've shown you, like on the screen, not ideal for long term, right? If I want to see you know, what I'm fixing, what I still have and all that. So here, I'm going to save it to my SQL server, to my database name, schema name. Come on, I shouldn't have. Okay, and table name. Um, there are ways if you do not want to pass table name, um, you know, in DBA tools, I think also in SQL Server module, I don't know, but in DBA tools, you definitely have options. You can incorporate DBA tools, which I'll show you, uh, you know, to create the table automatically with the, with the schemas, but I have created it. So now let's run this. And there's some warnings because I think my XP command shell is turned off, so it cannot run some of the um, rules. Now, if I take this regular T SQL, Control N, uh, connect to my local instance 2019, the data is saved, right? Uh, if we look at the 614, 1238. And I have some old ones because I was, you know, I, t I was testing this morning, um, and you know, I was testing even before. And other part, uh, I'm not going to go into this because, you know, for the interest of time, if you do not know, Azure Data Studio has some built-in graphs that you can use, or there is another extension called uh, Sundance, Sendance. Sorry, not Sun, Sendance. Uh, that has very strong um, um, capability of, or, or very nice capability of, you know, visualization. Um, so you can take advantage of those from here, and then you can share it. So I'm not going to go into this. Like I said, I want to keep the talk into the core topic, so you can do that. So hopefully, John, yeah, love it. Show improvements over time. Yeah, that's the, my point, right? So if you have thousand server, you are new to the company or you just took over, run it on the first day and then, you know, every week you run and, you know, then uh, you can also sort this by severity, right? So which one I, you know, if I have a finite amount of resource, where do I put my focus, right? Definitely I want to put my focus on the, not on the information, but on the higher ones, you know, but, you know, you have to decide what you want to do. Or you can just run one rule, right, that your security team is behind your back. To fix it, you can just run that one and, and fix that first. I mean, I'm not going to go into, you know, you have to decide what you need, but this shows you that yes, you can save the result and persist it. And over a period of time, you can see the improvement. Now I said at the beginning of my talk, yes, these rules are all well and good, but I might need customization for my environment. And uh, please, I'm not going to read this. That's why I wrote this here. Uh, Read this if you want to go into customization. Uh, do not go before reading this because some of this is stuff you have to have correct setup. Um, you know, like if you are, you know, writing your own rules, you need these two DLLs, and I found you know the answer here. So I collected it from many different places, uh, just so you do not have to do the same. So uh, so please, you know, do yourself a, a, a favor. So uh, there are a couple of uh, 
you know, variables that I want to run. So, you know, here I'm, you know, checking full backup. Uh, no, I'm not going to run that. I'll actually show you that. So I said, you know, the backup by default, Microsoft wants you to have a full backup every seven days. Right? That's pretty much, you know, most people do that at workplace. You know, weekends they take a full, weekdays they will take a diff and they will have a transaction log backup based on their requirements. Now, for some reason, say, I have a database that I do not like um, backup every seven days. I need so like three days, just an example. And these are all examples. You don't have to abide by this. I'm just showing you. So what I'm going to do now, I'll show you how you can override a rule, right? How does it look like? What does that mean, like overriding a rule? This is another JSON file. So we, here, what I'm saying, my ID is full backup. I'm doing the override. I'm changing my threshold to three. Then it's going to go and check if you're, if you have a full backup for every three days. Now next, someone might say, OK, I love this, but I only need one database to be backed up every three days. And the other database is taking full backup every seven days is fine, right? And again, please do not quote me that I said take full backup every seven, three days or anything. These are all examples. Uh, I'm just trying to show you, you know, what's possible. So now here, same thing. I said it's override, full backup threshold, but I put a filter on my target. Means what I'm saying, in my instance, out of all the database that are in full recovery model, only take check for full backup for every three days for this one database called Stack Overflow 2013. Rest all, seven days is fine. So please put your questions if I went too fast and if this just did not make sense to you what I just said, because this is important, because I know if you start using this in a large environment, all of you will come to a point that you will say, can I customize it? The default doesn't work for me. I have edge cases, so you will need that. OK, I'm not seeing anything, so I'm just going to move on. And I wrote all this, you know, in my uh, comments that what I did, so. So, you know, to give you an example, uh, let's go and change my max memory just for showing you this demo. My server has 32 gigram, my laptop, so I'm giving 32,000 to SQL Server. And this is going to complain now. Right? It says that I left very little for the OS, and I know that I'm just doing it purposely. But, you know, this has a formula, right? And I said, you know, like, I have a server with two terabyte in Azure VM running SQL Server. If I run this rule, it might want to give a lot more to the OS. I know that I don't need, maybe I don't have, um, you know, customized DLLs. I'm not running any other software. I know what I'm doing. Now I want to override this. How do I do that? So again, let me show you. I said for me, I want to keep it to 32,000 and I can filter it because I can say, you know, as you saw the filter with the database, I can, you know, have a filter with my server name. So only for this server, if it's 32,000, do not complain, uh, you know, complain for other ones, right? And now if I use that override rule along with other standard rules, I do not see this complaint, right? And I haven't reverted yet. I, I'm still at 32,000. But because I have the override rule, I wouldn't get this violation every time. Um, so let's roll back. And if I just run the standard rule, I shouldn't be getting this anymore. OK, uh, you can disable rules. I'm not going to go into details. I have examples here uh, that you can play with. Uh, I have, a, I think, TraceFlex 634, which is used for uh, column store compression, right? Uh, so automatically compressing, uh, you know, uh, when the segments are full, uh, but you can disable that. Some people want to do it manually in their own time. They know when they are doing it, so you can disable that. And uh, so how do I disable a rule, right? So let me show you the file.
all of these, the, the ones that you saw before uh, I wrote those, these are all given by Microsoft. Uh, so again, ID override enable false means I do not want this rule to run at all. I know what I'm doing. So I gave you some example here. You can you know enable disable this trace flag and play with these files if you want to. I can disable all trace flag rules if I don't want. So like I do not use any trace flag. I do not have anything to do with trace flag. I can disable all those, so it's less noise for me. I can even say you disable all the trace flags, but enable the one that's related to performance. So I can do that. So you, you know you can mix match in many different ways based on your need. Uh, I need to move a little bit faster based on the time. So create a new rule. Again, if you are writing your own rule, definitely read this. Read some of this stuff on the top. I'm just going to show you one custom T-SQL. So this is a T-SQL rule. You can use T-SQL, PowerShell, uh, C Sharp. Uh, there are a bunch of ways you can write uh, you know new rules. Uh, so this one is written by T-SQL. What this one is saying is complaining that I should have 25% of free space for all my database files. And you know, my company is not that rich. Leaving 25% around the year, probably not a good idea. So now I want to even override the threshold for my own rules, right? So let's go and take a look. Start typing your question. We only have 12 minutes. So I'll make sure that I answer your question. So. This is my ID. Item type I override for 10%. Maybe I should sh show you the rule that. This is a custom rule using T-SQL. And there's a threshold saying, you know, every file should have 25% free. And as you see, I have warning. Now, if I incorporate my override, I would not get that warning. I have other things that I'm getting warning about, but not that one. And then, the, you know, I have examples with common shell, um, um, you know, with the registry. There are other ones you can use, you know, with the WMI and all that. So I'm not going to go through this. And again, uh, if you're writing your own rules, uh, you know, these are a couple of you know, good uh, links to look at. Uh, OK, so now let's go back to the first one. So we have done this in depth, so we're going to OK, so central management server. So I know many of you have been thinking about this that, uh, hey, and I think um, this goes to Ruben's question. Um, hey, what you have been showing so far is good, but uh, how can I run this against? You know, you've been talking about it, show us now, right? So let's look at it. If you do not know what's a central management server, please look it up. And if you do not have central management servers, uh, I'm not saying that you have a problem. That's OK. But if you know uh, there is a community driven project called DBA Tools, uh, you know, Chrissy uh, from Europe, she drives this. There's hundreds of people contributed. Awesome, awesome. If you do not know, look it up. Uh, so this is a small script that I wrote. It take advantage of the DBA tools. And. You know, I. I I, I have a link here. So now what you can do, I can get all my servers in a variable um, from my central management server. And if you do not have a central management server, it's okay. Just put your server's name in a CSV. If you have it in a table, you can put a query here that you know select all my servers, um, <clears throat> you know, select server names from this table. Then once you have it, uh, you know, in PowerShell, there's something called for each. Now I'm going to go through each server in that <clears throat> variable. And then it's whatever I showed you, right? You can run it against server, you can run it against database. And I also show you how you can save this in a table. 
once you run with this, then you can go and query per server, per database, per ID, you know, whatever, right? By CB8 level and all that. I'm sure you guys can figure this out that in TSQL. So does anyone has any doubt about how to run this um, across the board for a large environment? Does this make sense? If not, please um, start typing in, in the chat. Because I want to make sure that you know this is important, right? Because you're not going to go and run this for each database all day by hand. Ruben, does that answer your question? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, so I've shown you this uh, running assessment, and I also actually put a note here uh, that few things that I'm not showing you here. Uh, you can move results to archive table if you want to keep it for long term. Uh, use compression maybe, uh, and you can purge results. Right? Say so I do not want to keep more than six months. You know, just have a purge routine after the collection every time, and then you can put reports on top of it. Either you know SSRS, Power BI, other reporting tools, whatever you use. Right? Some some fancy graphs so it's easier to consume, especially when you. Um, you know, when you show, send it to your boss, right? I always like to send graphs to our bosses, you know, they get impressed like, oh gosh, you know, look at this because, you know, nobody wants to read, you know, thousands line of, you know, records and data and all that. Show them some fancy graph with some bold color. Uh, they will love you. And they think really you are working hard. So it's, it's it works, you know, because they don't have time to read everything. So you send them a chart that I had thousand problem violation. Now I'm down to, 500 in a couple of weeks, right? So it's a, um, you know, they can really see better what you're doing. So the last thing I talked about extension, right? So now, so far what I've shown you, you need a little bit of coding, right? You know, it's, you know, very rudimentary PowerShell, but some of you might say, no, hey, I don't have time. Um, I'm a consultant. I went, I saw this server. How can I quickly just get assessment? Because I know, you know, we all know like, you know, Brent Ozer, uh, you know, Eric Darling, uh, uh, you know, Adam Mechanic, they all have like cool tools for us to help, you know, Paul Randall. Uh, but sometimes, you know, people are um, not comfortable, right? They say, no, no, you cannot put third party this and this in our server, which is okay. I respect that. Uh, but this is by Microsoft. So, you know, they shouldn't have this problem. So now let's connect to the server. Now, if you see these dashboards, right, you see these items. Now, there's one item called SQL assessment, and all of these are actually coming from extension. The SQL agent is extension. This is extension. Um, Azure migration is an extension. All of these are from, from different extensions. So maybe I should show you this as I'm talking about. Okay, we have six minutes, sorry. So this is the... Extension written by Microsoft is still in preview, so this is what I'm using in this case. So let's close this. We get some get some real estate back, right? So click SQL assessment, close this without doing anything. I can just say invoke assessment. That's it. So now it's running it against server and against all my user database. So no code, all from GUI. Uh, I know I still haven't talked about the permission one, which I will uh, research and add it next time. And I think someone asked, you know, I can send them back there. What permissions I need behind the scene? And once this is all done, and you can see this, you know, like this is all, you know, it's it's putting here all the details about, um, you know, about all the rules that it's running, and and what's happening. And then you can filter those. Uh, you can go to the target severity. You can filter before you see this, right? So it's done. So now I say, you know, can I just see what rules under DBA database, right? And now it's showing me only for that. And I can go and take out the filter. Now it's going to show for everything. The other couple of cool things. Oh, it's still clear. OK, good. I can create an HTML report. So save this and again, if you're a consultant, you are in a new place. How cool this will be in a few minutes. You have these reports to hand over. You can do that. 
I can also, I showed you how to save this in a SQL Server table, right? Now I created this. How do I save this result? Export as a script. Look at this. I get few. All this in a T SQL. I can have a connect here. SQL assessment. DBF one. And I can choose my database. The result is saved. Even though I'm using GUI, the results are saved. I can see the applicable rules. I can go to GitHub, look at everything. Next time I come here, it should show us in the history if I have multiple ones. So I run it once, I saved it. I fix few things, run it again, save it again. Then you can compare, you know, or, or from here you can choose which one you want to see. Um, so that's all I have. I'm going to close this. I will show you my contacts again. Um, I want to thank Kevin again, the whole leadership team, and thank all of you for you know taking time out of your busy schedule coming here, listening to me. I hope uh, you know this becomes somehow useful uh, to you. Um, and if you're not using it today right away, you know if you're taking up a new server. Uh, acquiring a company, going there, you know, for consulting. I think, uh, you know, uh, you can you can use this right away without doing much much development. Thank you, Joel. You said this has been very useful. Yeah, and please questions, comments. Uh, I, I I'll hang out here, um, and you know, Jason. Thank you for all the good questions. Uh, Caroline, thank you. Thomas, thank you for your kind words. Yeah. Nasir, thank you. Yeah, if anyone uh, wants to, you know, see something else, you know, I, I'm here. Uh, I have time, but if you know, I'm I'm sure other many of you have to go to meetings and your work lunch hour. So, um, yeah, someone said, "Well, love it." Thank you, thank you very much for your kind words. And if I can improve it, right? Any feedback is welcome. You know, I have three children. I'm not going to cry. You can give me honest feedback. So, Lee, thank you. I'll, I'll answer your question if you give me your contact, uh, you know, what permissions you need. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Sam. So while everyone is finishing up, having out, have, thank you and all any questions you have. I do have uh, one thing to remind everybody in two weeks, we will be meeting on uh, June 28th to talk about performance tuning Azure SQL database with Monica Rathman. So. Ooh. Everyone, please be sure to join us for that because that one, it, it's going to be awful, awesome since it's Monica. So if you haven't heard her before, please be sure to. Uh, and if not, please, if you have, please join us. You'll know how great she is. So come join us for that. So with that, Ali, I do want to thank you for this great presentation. Um, I think this is a great tool and sh should definitely be used for um, baselining. Uh, especially new environments, because I know as a consultant, I do that a lot. So this is truly something that's going to go into my little repertoire. So thank you so much. Oh, David Winston, I didn't know you were here. Thank you. <laughs> OK, yeah, I put the GitHub link. Um, if you give me like probably a few minutes, I just have to refresh the repo. So uh, yeah. Not ma no major change, but I I always you know review this few days before I present it again and you know make any changes and yep and truly I'll be putting it out there onto the uh, web page with the rest with the uh, link to the presentation so this will be perfect yeah so just uh, you know John has a question of data quality issues. So uh, Kevin, what kind of sessions you have maybe in your recording? I know you probably, I, you must have sessions around data quality, data type. Um, maybe, you know, John can reach out to you, John Mason. And uh, because, you know, I mean, I just don't want to give you a one or two sentence answer and I'm not trying to really be lazy uh, because it's, it's, it's a serious topic about data quality issue. Even when you talk about acid properties, I think one of the properties 
all about you know preserving your data quality with constraints and all that. It can be a, so. I'm sure if Kevin has any recordings or anything, Kevin can think of. Maybe Kevin can put it in the chat. So uh, Lee said, "Why to get video?" So go to YouTube. Uh, uh, and search for DBA Fundamentals YouTube channels, and it will be uploaded there in a day or two. And they have other remember, bunch of quick things. Yeah. So our, our wonderful that. website, dbafuntube.com. That's the easiest place to get the video. And if you like to subscribe to it, it'll be you'll get a message whenever we do subscribe it, and it should be out there in a day or two. Um, I cannot think of anything off the bat for data quality, but I know. It is a good idea to get some things on there for, for that itself. Um, I'll see if I can actually get some uh, presentations lined up for later this year or next on DBA, on data quality. That would be a good, a good topic. Yeah. So John, stay tuned. Uh, yeah. I, th I think it's the same for my group, the, the, the DBA virtual group. Uh, probably, Kevin, let's, I'll send you an email. Maybe we can sync up. Maybe present in the both groups, in you know, both the large group. I think it'll be a nice one. Uh, maybe we can brainstorm a little bit to bring bring someone. Perfect. All right. It seems as if the tide of comments has calmed down. Everything's been answered. So with that, I do want to thank you, Ali, for joining us this week for our presentation. Uh, wonderful, as always. So with that, thank I do thank you all. Um, we'll be seeing you all next time. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have thank a good you. one. You too.